everyone, this is Garrett, and this is Serious Sam 3, and we're about to do level 6, The Silent Riddler. Sam, have you reached the Sphinx yet? I'm getting there. You solved that riddle yet? Not quite. We've translated one of the lines, but we still don't have a solution. What's it say? It says the true riddle of the Sphinx has many questions, but only one answer. Is that supposed to help? It's the best we have right now. How comforting. Yeah, after that little talk with Quinn, we're gonna be here for a while because it's this place is a nightmare. It's basically there's about 84 enemies running towards us. And with about 84, I, I mean 84, but we gotta kind of kill all of them because if we walk too far away from this place, we're gonna spawn more stuff at the same time. And after killing a certain number of these guys, it's gonna spawn a helicopter. And this game's helicopters are just all horrible. Like every helicopter in this game is super powerful. And you don't really want to deal with it in a big open area. So we're gonna deal with it over here. But for that, we're gonna need to kill these guys. And that, it's gonna take about five minutes, basically. We're just gonna be here for a while shooting dudes because that's what's up. That's what's going on in this place. They're all over the place. They're taking some pretty abstract routes to get to us a lot of the time. We can probably find a couple over here, which are like behind us now because they went all the way around. And that's so much for that. There's also a bunch of sand surrounding this place, but there's a giant worm thing in the sand somewhere. It's basically a sandworm, as you would expect from a worm in the sand. And if you if you get attacked by that, you instantly die. So we're we're gonna be here for a bit, uh, killing dudes trying that are trying to kill us and stuff. There's also a secret area near here. I'm gonna get it after we kill everyone because it's not really too useful to go to now. I guess, I don't know actually if that would be a good idea. I'm just sort of talking right now. Now I'm thinking out loud and now I'm not sure if my decision was good. Either way, we're just gonna kill stuff. But it might actually be good to get the secret area now, but the downside is it's basically on the top of the highest building here, and then means you're on the top of the highest building while all these people are shooting at you, so that's kind of bad as well, so it's like, I don't know. I don't know what good ideas are anymore. Either way, shooting dudes. That's the main idea that you gotta take out of this. Kill everything, and then move on. Try to figure out where all these explody gun noises are coming from. Shoot roughly in that direction, and then hope. That you did the right thing. That it didn't turn out that he was a friend. After a while, they just stopped moving as well. So there's just a bunch of enemies that are just standing still behind walls here. Like, they sort of... A lot of them just sort of run to the middle and they're like, Well, he's not here. I give up forever. Like this. And you can just hold... Kind of hold the left mouse button for a while and kill everyone. Which is the good thing about this gun. But there you go. Can I... Did I just hear a helicopter? I'm uncertain. But I'm also too scared to move forward. <laughs> like, the helicopters really are just super scary. Like, the helicopter that we fought in that one level, where we had, like, a separate health bar, that's basically every helicopter. And indeed, there he is. And we do not want to get shot by him. Basically kind of waiting for him to stop moving. And then immediately shoot him five times with a rocket. So it instantly dies. And we don't have to worry about it anymore. In big open areas, it kind of just starts shooting at you a little bit after it sees you. So if you're in a big open area, that thing's just gonna destroy you entirely. And uh, it's not fun. It's not great. It makes me sad. I don't want to be sad. So I elected not to do that. There is one guy alive somewhere and I have genuinely no idea where. So we're going to the secret area. Maybe we'll accidentally run into him. There's some rocks. You can jump on top of it. And we need to get on top of that building. So we're just going to jump from building to building. And in the previous level, I mentioned... Oh, I wonder when we're getting the laser gun. I don't remember. But the laser gun and this weapon are both weapons that only appear in secret areas. This being the sniper rifle. And this is the King of the Hill secret, as they decided to call it. And the sniper rifle is really, really good. And we still have some ammo from the previous level as well. We got like three bullets or something. So we have... A couple shots available. We're gonna use it a little bit later because it is a, just a genuinely good gun. In the previous series Sam games, it did extra damage if you zoomed in. In this game it actually just just does the max amount of damage all the time, but I think it is more accurate. 
if you zoom in, so we're just going to be doing that regardless. Where is that final enemy, though? <laughs> he probably has somewhere, somewhere to the right over here, because that's really the only place I haven't really looked, I don't think, but... That was very odd. The music's still playing, implying that he is still hanging out here somewhere. Pretty quick up. Yeah. He saw me. Oh, there he is. I have a really hard time seeing enemies in this game. I don't know if that's just me, but like, to me, if an enemy is standing next to a wall, 99% of the time I won't see him because to me they just look like the wall. I don't know why, and it's a real problem with this game to me, but whatever. That's the sandworm I was talking about. You don't really want to get eaten by that, but we are going in that direction from this truck, because if you run from this truck, the sandworm doesn't care, because secret areas, I guess. There is a secret area all the way towards this stick over here, where there is a secret minigun. And the secret minigun is pretty great. We got some ammo for that in a previous level as well. And we'll be using it every now and then, it's kind of fun. But yeah, if you go, like, towards the sand, you'll start hearing that noise behind you, the ground starts shaking all over the place, you'll see that. And then when he gets to, like, the closest he can get, he gets out, and you don't want to get hit by that. That is not a good thing to get hit by, it hurts a lot. And I don't want to deal with it. New enemy! It's a little robot that could. It's a blue biomechanoid. It shoots lasers. It dies in a single rocket. We don't want to get shot by the lasers. The lasers hurt a lot. The lasers hurt so much. And we are going to run reasonably far forward. Towards that safe point right there. And we're going to just spawn a whole bunch of stuff at once. Because we are at another spot where I don't really want to walk forward. There's going to be a lot of clear skeletons. A lot of kamikazes. There's going to be more stuff than there would usually be because I've walked pretty far forward. But there's not going to be the max amount of stuff that you would possibly have to deal with. And, like, there's a bunch of kamikazes that, again, tr sort of try to flank you if you are fighting from, like, ahead there. And because we're in the middle here, they, they don't really have a chance to flank us because this is just one big open area and we can see everything. But if you, like, walk slightly forward first and then start, like, killing people, then the, you might be, like, in the middle of the town when you start fighting these guys, and that's actually pretty scary. The lasers try to hit us, but a lot of the time they actually hit the enemy as well. And that's actually kind of useful here, which is another good reason as to why you kind of want to spawn everything at once. Because sometimes it, it can be easy to miss the enemy, and then suddenly they'll just get destroyed by lasers instead, and that's actually quite nice. It makes the area a lot less scary, oddly enough. Like, these laser dudes just deal a lot of damage. And they are surprisingly less of a problem if you're simultaneously dealing with more enemies. Just because they can deal as, like, bullet sponges, I suppose, or laser sponges in this case. And, uh, it's not so bad anymore, no? Plus, this way, we're killing more enemies at a quicker pace. And we get to use our double barrel shotgun every now and then, because... I did mention in the previous level that the sledgehammer basically is a more effective way to deal with clear skeletons in this game but this gun makes a really satisfying noise and i find that kind of an important aspect of the weapon personally like if the thing makes a cool noise i kind of want to use it and biomex are chickens so that's why we're just gonna deal with them sound also still kind of confuses me in this game sometimes because uh, it always sounds closer than it actually is <laughs> And again, this may just be, like, a thing with me. That I just don't have good ears or something, I don't know. But I can never tell how close something is to me, judging from the sound. Like, even if it's all the way over there, you can very clearly hear, hear their screams and stuff. And it seems- it always sounds like they're really close, but then they're actually just on the other side of just an area. And it's- it can be pretty confusing, but oh well. We're gonna move over here, because there's a secret area over here. Boom! There's a barrel. You can destroy it. Yes, some armor. Secret armor. Everyone's happy. Couple enemies there. We need to have 145 enemies at a certain point in time, which I noted. And one of the enemies spawns when you walk over here. That enemy is that little robot. The little robot that once, but isn't going to. And that was the minigun. One small problem with... It's not really even a problem. It's more just a nuisance, <laughs> in my opinion. Is that... To switch to the minigun, you press 4. Like, if you switch to the minigun, you press for once. 
And if you don't have the minigun and you press 4, you get this weapon. And it's kind of... it takes some getting used to to remember that you have a minigun. Because I very often want to use this weapon right now due to the fact that this was not a... Well, I guess at this point it's not a secret weapon anymore, so we get more ammo for it. Like, minigun ammo is kind of sparse right now. Or scarce. Lars. I don't know. Just words. We don't have a lot of it. And... I kind of want to use this weapon more because of that, and I just keep accidentally switching to the minigun. Small issue, not really anything you can do about it, but whatever. Just kill everyone, and don't worry about it. Also, um, every secret area so far where I've complained about frame rate, um, the problem was usually that with lower frame rates, you'd have more problems getting the secret area. In this level, <laughs> It is the first secret where if you're playing on a higher frame rate, it's a lot harder <laughs> to get the secret area. So, you know, it kind of balances out in terms of hard to get secret areas. I don't know. Yeah, either way, at this point we're at 145 kills, if you're wondering about killing everyone. And I'm just gonna run around and pick up some stuff. But yeah, the secret area that I am talking about in this particular instance is not over here. It is somewhere in this direction. We'll run across it at some point. There it is. It's in this little area. Because the secret area is right there. There's just like a health power up. And at 30 FPS, you just do this. You just walk into it, no problem. At 60 FPS, you're just gonna run into it and you'll just bounce back. And really the only way I found out to get it is to just run into this doorway and sort of hope that it accidentally pushes you far enough in by just doing this and uh, sometimes you'll get it it's pretty hard <laughs> when your frame rate's too good so uh, yeah just just uh, download a copy of fraps this is a demo version to lower your frame rate if you want to get that secret easily and uh, from that point we move on now from here we can just jump over this little gate fence thing whatever it is small wall tiny wall uh, but we're gonna actually walk through the middle here because there's a spawn trigger over here <laughs> Also a checkpoint, I guess. Which, uh... <laughs> very missable in that regard. Due to the fact that... Like, you, you don't even need, like, a thing to jump over. Like, it's very easy to just jump over this, and then you just skip that altogether. And there's actually a secret area attached to this little building here as well, because you can actually just open it. Two doors for some reason. Secret ticket booth. And he gives you some serious sound too money. And if you pick it up, he gets mad. Line up! I'm offering free tickets to hell. And indeed they comply to that request. And simultaneously there's another five enemies to kill, so all in all, pretty good day. Pretty good deal. I'm gonna throw some C4 in that direction. Sort of towards that doorway. I'm gonna use C4. Uh, because it works pretty well taking care of those guys. Destroy some of those pillars, and pillars always make me really angry. And there's going to be a C4 refill thing pretty soon anyway, so we might as well use some of that C4 as well. I'm actually just going to throw some around here. I'm not actually sure how effective this is going to be. But there's a reasonable amount of enemies here, so I'm just going to throw it all over the place here. But first of all, Egyptian tablet. So it's an Exodus thing. That was a bunch of text. It's next to this big rock thing right here. You, uh, it's, it's there. There you go. Very good. And inside this little building, there's a pink thing. And we need that pink thing to open the doors. It's a key card. You kind of know what key cards are, I hope. And if not, then I don't know. So from this point, it might be a good idea to just jump back over this little wall because then you can sort of just funnel everything. You can also just blow up all that C4 and see how much we can take care of it. But I'm just going to stand in the middle here because it's more fun. If we do run into, like, problems... I'll actually just, uh, like, jump over the little wall, and then we can just funnel them all through the same little doorway. Because enemies can't jump, and, like, there's a very small amount of enemies in this game that actually has the ability to jump at all. And fortunately, we haven't actually even seen those yet, so, um, yeah, jumping over things, pretty good way of thwarting the enemy forces. Due to the fact that that is just their major weakness. Plus, these guys, not really that big of an issue, like... The kamikaze are kind of scary, but the, everyone else, you just sort of move around and you'll probably dodge their attacks. Plus, their attacks don't even deal that much damage until those clear skeletons, which are also in this area. Which are obviously a little bit more of a problem. But we do still have rockets, and rockets work against everything, so 
just about it. You'll be fine. Like, if you just stay in the middle here, there's really no problem at all. Maybe he moves closer to that doorway. It's gonna be a couple more clear skeletons spawn. But hey, we have a dull barreled shotgun and everything's pretty okay. And we need two more enemies. <laughs> I should be at 219 and I'm missing two. There we go. Everyone's dead. Now, you can use the keycard to open that door, but you can also use it to open this door over here. To get into this otherwise impenetrable building, which is just completely impossible to enter. I mostly opened it at all, because then it opens from this side as well, and jumping on this thing is super fiddly. <laughs> like, I usually have quite a bit of trouble actually jumping out of there again, so you might as well use the keycard for that. But, C4. We got all of it back, and this is one. Of, this is basically the same as those rocket caves. It just grows C4, so you can always just get it back again. So that's pretty cool. And I wonder actually if you could just run towards this area and then just go through the door and then just throw C4 at everyone. That might actually work, although you do have to run past a couple of enemies, so it might be a little bit scary. But there's also 50 armor, pretty good. Also some health, secret health, which. Is again pretty easy to miss. It's actually kind of hard to see, but there you go. That's the main reason why we actually ended up going there. Plus, the C4 is actually quite nice for the next area as well. So, we might as well grab it. And whoop, that takes us to this next area. Now, the shadows sometimes mess up a bit here. I'm not really sure what causes it. It's happened a lot. And it might happen again. It might not. We'll, we'll see when it happens. But either way, we're just going to move forward. With a trusty sledgehammer, because you can already hear some good friends coming up. That are all just dying to meet a hammer in the face. It takes a while for them to come here. Also, I'm not going to run towards them. Because it does spawn a reasonable number of enemies. Also, I'm going to just throw some C4 over here. Uh, just make a nice little area of that. Because you can also hear some clear skeletons coming towards us. And... They can be quite a nuisance. The horizontal swing is very good at taking care of several of these guys at once, which is always nice, of course. But the C4 is pretty good at taking care of player skeletons. Especially when you just sort of put it all in a row like that, and then boom! A lot of it's gone. I'm just going to throw C4 in that general direction for a while. You can also stick it on them, which is why you kind of have to be careful doing this. Because sometimes you'll end up sticking it on an enemy, and then it runs towards you. And then you just get hit by your own explosion because of it. So don't do that, obviously. But aside from that, after throwing all that C4, generally the rest shouldn't be too much of a problem. They are being a little bit rude right now. There are still a couple alive, but I think those are the last couple. Also, there's a bunch of like little dudes coming towards you as well. I've never actually seen them run all the way over here, so I think I'm doing something different than I would normally do. But hey, what are you going to do? There's plenty of health and armor here to go around. So even if we lose some of our health, it's fine. No real issue. Easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. No problem taking care of these guys at all. We're going to have to reload all our weapons in a second, but you know. At least now we got a chance to use everything at once for a situation. So that's kind of cool in the end. That's what matters. There we go. Come towards us, grab your shotgun shells, and leave. It's like you just had the perfect amount of space to take care of everything and simultaneously refill up on all of your ammo while killing everything. Usually that's where they are. Like, usually the dudes with the guns just sort of stay on that side. I guess some of them may have seen me, which is why they started running towards me, but oh well. After killing a bunch of dudes, it starts to spawn these guys, and from this point on, you can mostly just run around with your sledgehammer. Didn't actually expect to see some people there still. But for the most part, these guys are all aching for a good sledgehammering. And it would be unfair to us not to give it to them. And that's exactly what we're going to do. After reloading our guns for a bit. All of them, because we kind of shot everything at once there. And it became a little bit more messy than expected, but it worked out. And as long as something worked out, I'm just going to pretend it was all part of the plan. But yeah, moving on. More of these guys. More sledgehammer foo going on. Couple in that direction as well. Couple hiding inside the floor every now and then, which are reasonably missable. Like, there's one over here. You can actually hit it already, even before it's all the way out, so that's cool. And just run back and forth for a while and kill everything that moves. 
I feel like I should be at a co- yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, two more enemies, like 295. I didn't actually make notes of this place because missing enemies is reasonably difficult in this level. There's a couple which are easy to miss in a sense, but there's only like a a couple which are like uh, fairly well hidden. I'm going to kill that guy with a minigun because I feel like it. And then we're going to move on to another sledgehammer area because this place has even more of these guys. And they do take... A reasonable amount of time before they actually use their range attack. And it's just these guys as well. So it's like, you can just sort of do this. Usually you'll be okay as long as you get to them quickly enough. And because they have to walk a fixed pattern before they actually go towards you. Like, they have to go down the wall. Reach that specific point before they have a chance to even see you. You can just run around. Smacky-packy. boodly boop Everything dies. You gotta grab these power-ups because that does actually spawn a couple extra ones. And there's a couple on the other side as well. A couple power-ups waiting for us. And there's actually an Egyptian slab here as well, which I'll show off in a minute. But until then, we're just gonna run around with a sledgehammer. Because that is what this area is all about. And that's the life we lead. And, luckily enough, the shadows haven't completely, like, messed up. Like, it's a weird thing. Sometimes in this level, in this like particular just entire area with these walls and stuff, sometimes it just like starts blinking shadows rapidly. It seems to happen less now I've lowered the graphics a bit, so maybe it's just something graphics card related or something. I'm not 100% sure. But it is odd. I don't like it that much. Not a fan. Here's an Egyptian slab. It has some words on it. Gotta need them for the achievement. And Horus was sad apparently. Allowing us to move to the next area. This next area has a couple of jerks. That's one of them. But, as per usual, they're pretty weak to explosives. Two, like, one of these C4s is about as good as just throwing two rockets. So just throwing two of those C4s is enough to take care of these guys pretty quickly. Plus, in the next area, there's going to be another one of those C4 rejuvenation thing places. So... Might as well use a couple of them here. And there's one over there, which we're going to take care of before we move on, because this place is scary. This is the first place where we're kind of going to use that secret sniper rifle. There's a couple of those robots, which I might end up shooting with them, because they are pretty annoying. They do deal a pretty high amount of damage with those lasers. And obviously, I don't want to deal with them. But there's also going to be a couple of bulls in this next area. And bulls is where I... In basically every serious Sam game, bulls is where I like to use a sniper rifle on because like the the bulls just die in a single shot from the sniper rifle and basically two shots from just about everything else. And it's kind of nice to just take care of them easily that way. Don't really want to walk too far forward because there is a lot of hit scan damage in this area. And there's also a bunch of Nars, and I don't really want to run towards the Nars and then suddenly get shot in the face 20 times. Although most of the hitscan weapon, like most of the hitscan damage were those little arachnoids, and there's a surprisingly low amount of those in this area. But after a while, everything dies. Things start spawning. And I think if you walk f far enough forward, it's going to spawn like the kamikazes and stuff. And it's not actually based on the timer for as far as I know, but... You have to wait for so long for enemies to actually reach you that you might as well just run towards them, you know? A little bit more fun every now and then. Rockets, again, are pretty effective against the robots. Also pretty effective against everything else. So if you are running into a sticky situation, you might want to use that. Because sometimes it's a little bit too scary to start running towards the, uh, the whatchamacallits. Also, sniper rifle. Pretty great. Bulls, not so much fun. You can also use a single sniper rifle shot and then... Uh, you can also use a single rocket and then switch to the, the double-barreled shotgun. And that will actually deal enough damage to take care of them as well. But it always worries me a bit. I, I like to do it when there's not that many enemies around me, but in this area there's a lot of kamikazes and also those laser dudes. And I don't like dealing with laser dudes at the same time as basically anything else, so... Preferably... I... Uh, blah. Basically just shoot everything. Basically, just shoot everything with the most effective weapons. I did say earlier that I like fighting laser dudes with as many enemies as possible, but at the same time, it is still a lot of enemies at the same time, so... You'll get hit less by the lasers, but you'll get hit more by everything else around you, so it's like, I don't know, I don't know what the good idea is. 
just run to the places where I say it's safe and you should be pretty okay. I feel like the like Kamikaze are stuck or something because they are having some trouble reaching me. They are obnoxiously loud. They do sometimes get stuck behind like this little area. Sometimes they get stuck at the little rock over there as well. And uh, that's actually usually where the last remaining enemies are. Like there's usually just a bunch of kamikazes that are sitting there. Though it does look like this time they are actually realizing how to move. So I feel like this time around they should be pretty okay. After a while it's actually going to spawn a couple bulls in the corners. But I feel like maybe I need to walk further forward or something. Maybe an enemy got stuck again. I don't know. I'm going to switch to my sniper rifle just in case. Maybe it's those clear skeletons. There is also like a, a bull that spawns like in the corner over there. And if you like are if you're fighting there at the time, you'll just die. <laughs> you'll just instantly die. And it's like really horrible. It's that particular one. Real jerk. Very easy to die against. Also, the sniper rifle's really fast in this game. I'm pretty sure it shoots a lot faster in this game than in the previous games. But again, it is a secret weapon. Ammo is only found in secret areas. And you can only carry like 20 bullets or something low. It's pretty ridiculous how low it is. But there you go. I think I'm going to use the uh, other weapons for these guys because I'm running out of sniper rifle ammo here. And uh, it is working. But it's not like we're really fighting anything else. So we might as well be a little bit more conservative with our ammo. I'm also a little bit curious where those clear skeletons went because I, they were just sort of running around. <laughs> oh, they, he just gave up with moving. No, that makes sense, I suppose. Okay, Quinn. I've reached the Sphinx. Tell me you have this thing solved. Not just yet. We think we're close, though. Close don't do me much good. Sounds like it's time for Plan B. Sam, for God's sake, it's one of the Earth's oldest artifacts. Okay, so I'll blow it the hell up really carefully. Do you want to undo all the work we've done? Hey, feel free to keep looking for answers. I'll keep looking for dynamite. All right, so a couple notes. Uh, there's a couple of enemies that just came out of the ground there. The call between Quinn and you will start when you basically killed everyone that doesn't appear when you get close to them. So there's a couple enemies over here as well. And that's basically the last of the sort of missable enemies. Everything else is just going to be really obvious from this point on. Right now we're at a 407 enemies killed. And gonna need more than just this. We're gonna need more than just this, but we're just gonna place a bunch of C4 onto the Sphinx because that's how Sam do. Also, another Egyptian slab. That one's also, uh, just every Egyptian slab is kind of immiscible in this stage because they're just pretty hard to see because of how bright everything is. But there you go. I think it's gonna take just a few more charges. And indeed, cutscene. Quinn, your egghead solved that riddle yet? Plan B is good to go. Just a few more minutes. Take your time. Time for plan B. Ten sticks of dynamite, four hundred dollars. Blowing up one of mankind's oldest artworks, priceless. I finally get it. Sam, what the hell are you doing? This is Hold, please. Man's got to know when to screen his calls. I finally understand why Sam has gone mad and is just destroying everything. Because he's trying to activate the time lock, so he's going back in time anyway, and then all is this going to be undone. So it doesn't even he can just destroy whatever he wants, I guess in this case. Might as well destroy everything, why not? I mean, he's just gonna undo all of it anyway, so, you know. Might as well have some fun while you're at it. But, it still seems like a bit of an odd situation he's put himself in. Either way, there's a hole here. And I'm gonna jump down now that I've just refilled my C4. We fell down. And now there's just gonna be a bunch of walking. There's not actually any enemies in this place. Just a couple of weird puzzles. This one's particularly odd to me. Oh, fuck. I don't know why he says that. If you pull that thing, that thing is going to go up immediately. 
and you sort of just need to wait for this thing to have done its little movements. And I'm not actually sure... Oh, wow. Okay. So, fun fact. <laughs> if you're playing this at 60 FPS, which is a common thing I like to say during this playthrough, uh, this thing goes up before you actually have a chance to jump on it, and then you have to just pull the switch again for it for the puzzle to work slightly differently, and then you can jump on it. It's really odd. Either way, now the lever, lever makes a hole in the wall over here. To make way what for... To make way for some staircase. If you are under this, you will instantly die. I'm sure you are shocked by this revelation. And followed by that is another long hallway. Sam? It's awfully quiet down here. Nothing's tried to kill me in minutes. Creepy. Very creepy. So here's a dropped urn, and I can use this as a reference because it means that there is a hallway over here. Whoosh. Another secret spooky hall. Oh, fuck. Research don't Research kill, don't aliens. kill aliens. aliens. Big guns, Big guns do. do. Remember that guy? He was pretty cool. But yeah, it also has a weapon, the Devastator. And this thing is pretty neat. And because I have the bonus edition content stuff, it also has a scope. I'll probably not use that too much because it works just as well without the scope. But yeah, scope, pretty neat. It shoots basically really fast rockets and it's a really good weapon. <laughs> and we'll be using it every now and again. But first we're gonna go towards that doorway. Hmm. Won't budge. Well, so much for that. But there is an Egyptian slab on the floor here. Looks kind of like a tile, but if you look at it for a while, hey, it's a bunch of words. And there's also this place, I guess, which is actually really large. <laughs> but yeah, this thing. Sometimes a man's gotta accessorize. This place is pretty nifty looking. And with what I mean with pretty big, like. It's deceptively large. <laughs> it just seems pretty small, but you can walk all the way around here. It's a shame it's so dark in here. But what are you going to do? We did, however, just accessorize and it replaces our grabby hands with this thing. This thing's going to be pretty neat. It's not going to be used too much, but it has some uses. So there you go. It also is used to open this thing. Would you look at that? Is cute and practical. And it takes us to this elevator. And if you crouch on this elevator, you can see through it because that's how the elevator works. Because it just goes that fast. Cutscene time. Whoa. I'm in. I found it. The secret chamber. You won't believe it. And Natris has found something too. The data's headed your way. Let me know when you know what it means. All right. It sounds significant. Try not to blow it up. I'll let you know when I have anything. So this is kind of cool because this is basically just a big map of a bunch of uh, Serious Sam 1 stuff. So that's kind of cool to see. I believe it is the Valley of the Sphinxes. I might be wrong. I might just be saying lies. Could be Karnak and Luxor. Who knows? We're gonna walk towards that doorway over there. Because it looks the same as the other one. So it might as well work the same, right? And this is basically a tutorial area for our new grabby hands. Because you can point at people and explode. Cute and practical and deadly. And it is pretty fun to use in that regard. Sometimes. You can even use it at two enemies at once. You can also jump here and take falling damage, which is pretty fun. But yeah, you can hit several enemies at once. Take care of them very quickly. You can also hit, like, certain statues and stuff, but I guess not these particular ones. But it just takes a little bit too long to actually kill them, and that that's sometimes just really bad. Sam, 
There's definitely some useful data in the stream you sent. We're deciphering now. In the meantime, head outside. We've got a transport arranged. Are you kidding? No one in their right mind would fly in here right now. We found somebody willing. Great. Crazy people make the best pilots. And after that little call, we're gonna run to the other side of this place. We're gonna grab this 100 health power up. And we are gonna run all the way to the other side. The remaining 147 enemies are all gonna run towards us. So you might as well run to the other side over here and grab the last secret of this level. Which is a secret health power up that's just lying over here. There we go. And that makes secret 8 out of 8. We found four tablets, and now we just gotta focus on killing everything. If you want, you can use your new grabby hand to just destroy a bunch of stuff here. And it is pretty fun. After a while, it does, like, overheat or something. And then you can't use it for a while, or it just won't kill them, and, uh... It makes it pretty risky to use, and it works differently against different enemies as well. Like, these guys just explode. The kamikazes will still run towards you while you're using it against them, which makes it really scary to use <laughs> against those guys. And other, like, every enemy reacts differently, basically. And sometimes it takes longer for them to die as well, so it's not super good to use, but it is kind of interesting to see a new weapon again, so there is that. Now, moving on, we are just gonna try not to die. That's basically the main goal for the remaining battle over here. Do remember that there's a lot of power-ups in this place. There was a bunch of, like, health and armor power-ups at the start. And there's also a 50 health power up just like right next to me because I never picked it up. It was in the secret area. And honestly, I don't really know what the best location is to fight these guys. One thing I would recommend is to try and keep one guy alive at the end of this all because then at least you will be able to pick up all the stuff for the, like, the levels that are coming up. But right now, I'm gonna try to just kill all the dangerous stuff before it gets too close to us. A couple clear skeletons coming our way. Also a couple of those laser dudes, so I don't really enjoy that too much. This is actually a pretty hectic battle because there's just a lot of stuff coming towards you at once and it can very easily go wrong in that regard. We do still have our minigun that we picked up earlier. We do still have the cannon and stuff from the previous level as well, but again, kind of want to try to stick to weapons that I got in this level, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And use our last sniper rifle shot to kill that guy. And do that for the remaining ones, because it works pretty well. Again, you don't want to move out too far, because the worms are still around, and they are still pretty good at killing people. And uh, that's why we're not going out. Uh, for some reason, they don't attack anyone else except for us, which is kind of rude, but... Video games, right? That's probably a reason for it. They're probably behind mental control or something like that. Storyline, storyline, lore, lore, etc. So we're just not going to question why no one else is getting eaten by sandworms in here, but... We're just going to keep fighting. Armor power up over there, might as well pick it up, because we just took some damage anyway. And after a while, we're going to fight a whole bunch of those red biomechanoids, so I'm a little bit worried. We've uh, killed about half of the enemies here already, so it's going pretty well. Because now they're coming in kind of considerably lo smaller numbers, it seems, so there you go. I'm not sure... Like, you probably want to keep one of those purple guys alive for the end. Sometimes the enemies just sort of get stuck, and uh, here we go. Uh, it does take a while for the actual projectile to hit the enemy, but it does work very well against those red biomechanoids. Because again, you only have to hit it five times, just like with the rocket launcher, and it kills them. And uh, it gets rid of a lot of rockets flying your way in that regard, so that's pretty nifty. Pretty good. We want that. More of that, please. But it does mean that there are some other biomechanoids. I think it spawns like two on the left side and two on the right side at some points. So there is probably one coming towards us from all the way over there as well, which worries me a little bit because I haven't actually seen it yet. Plus, I, you, I missed one of my Devastator shots, so I'm going to have to hit one decent shot with the rocket launcher as well. And all in all, life's pretty scary, but there's only 30 enemies left, so there you go. This is, like, really the most useful stats thing I've ever seen on one of those LCD keyboard things, and... It would actually not be too bad if it would just show stats on screen the entire time. Like how many kills you got, and I wonder actually if there's a menu thing for that. It wouldn't actually surprise me too much if there was just a thing in the menu where you could like turn on 
like how just show on screen how many kills you've gotten at any point and how many secrets you found in a level and stuff like that because that is actually pretty useful information sometimes especially in an area like this i'm guessing someone got stuck somewhere or something because there's still a lot of enemies alive and uh there's no one here so what is going on sometimes enemies do still just get stuck like pathfinding is hard for enemies sometimes and sometimes enemy spawns are directly connected to other enemies and if that specific enemy gets stuck somewhere, you're just sort of waiting. But if we just keep killing, eventually more enemies will spawn. We keep finding a couple enemies that are just walking around, so... Fair enough, I suppose. There we go. There's the other biomechanoid. Might as well shoot. Well, I might as well use that gun because I don't, I don't like that many rockets flying towards me at any point in time. <laughs> It's always scary when those guys attack, especially with that. Uh, it is really like one of the scariest new attacks they added in, in the series, um, series, honestly, all those rockets flying towards you. And I don't like dealing with it all that much. But most of them are gone now. I'm gonna keep that Rocketeer alive for now because I wanna make sure I get as many power-ups as possible for the levels that are coming up. Because why not? There's a bunch of them lying around, and we are running a little bit low on rockets over here right now. Sledgehammer's still awesome. Everything's good. I'm pretty sure there's another purple rocketeer, so I'm gonna kill this one. I might have actually been wrong on that, but oh well. <laughs> what are you gonna do? It looked like there was, like, purple... Oh, yeah, there we go. There is someone else shooting me. With the purple projectiles. So no harm done there. Boom. Apparently, there's currently still two enemies alive, so... I'm gonna kill at least this guy. Who seems to have gotten himself stuck in a thing. <laughs> I don't even know how he managed to do that, but fair enough, I suppose. I think the other one might actually be there as well, from the sounds of things. I can hear him, at least, but... Yep, the other one's stuck there as well. Alright, cool! That means we have some time to walk around, because it means he can't move. Because again, enemies cannot jump. Because why would you give enemies abilities like that? It would make them too overpowered. I'm really only, only going to grab these. But 300 assault rifle bullets seems a little bit too much to leave lying around. So we might as well grab it like that. And then we finish the level by killing this last dude. Goodbye, my friend. And there we are. There we are. There we are. There we are. Time for us to get the fu- Hellfire? Fancy meeting you here. And the pleasure is all mine. Any news from HQ? They analyzed all that data you found. There are two massive power generators under Karnak and Luxor. It looks like they powered the time lock. Let me guess. They want me to turn them on. Oh, now you can turn things on? Shut up and fly. No, oh, those crazy kids in their banter. But yeah, that was the secret Riddler and also the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed it so far. Barely over the estimated time. But we did get a whole bunch of cool power-ups and a bunch of cool weapons. Used a bunch of new stuff. And all in all, it was a pretty fun experience for everyone involved. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And the next time we play, we are going to do level 7, Unearthing the Sun. And I hope to see you guys there. Bye-bye.